Trio sonatas were very popular in the Baroque period, so that's around 1600 to 1750 AD. Although it's called a trio, it's actually a composition written for four instruments usually. So why is it called a trio, you may well ask. Well, it's called a trio because there are three individual written out parts and the fourth instrument plays an accompaniment which is known technically as a continuo. This fourth part wasn't written out in full. Instead, the player, which was usually a harpsichord player or something similar, would improvise an accompaniment based on the harmony of the piece. The chords were written in figured bass. A modern day equivalent could be a lead sheet for a pop song where the tune and words are given, plus a bunch of chord symbols. A guitarist or piano player uses the chord symbols to make up an accompaniment as they go along. Trio sonatas were normally written for two treble instruments and one bass, plus continuo. For example, two violins, a cello and a harpsichord. This means the bass part is doubled up because it's played by a bass instrument, like the cello, and an accompaniment instrument, like the harpsichord. Any of the normal instruments from the time could feature in a trio sonata. These include the violin, viola, cello, flute, oboe, bassoon and recorder. Here's a painting showing what a group might have looked like. And here's an example of what a trio sonata sounded like, minus the continuo. This is the first movement of Opus 3, number 1 by Corelli. The texture of music in a trio sonata is usually contrapuntal. That means that each instrument is equally important and the music is made by weaving together separate melodies which have their own rhythms. <laughs> 